Hey there, is it your passion to play violin? But at the end of the day, you think I'm just too tired. You want progress, you want to practice, but then a day goes by that you don't practice and another day goes by that you don't practice. Or maybe you just practice a little bit and you have the feeling that you've achieved nothing in the half hour, hour or maybe two hours that you've spent on the violin. Now in this video I'm going to show you what I practice when I have very little time. And online we all make jokes about practicing 40 hours a day and practice, practice, practice. And you might feel so pushed and like you're the only one who doesn't practice all the time or something. While it's perfectly normal and I've seen I think all my students struggle with the fact that life just gets in the way. Except if you're a full-time conservatory student and your parents pay for everything and you can just sit in a room and practice. But for the rest of us, we have responsibilities and you can say, yes, Lata, what do you know about it? Uh, the violin is your day job, so to say. Um, but Even if the violin is your day job, my day job is being a mom of uh, three kids of two years and under and running a business, which also means that I have to spend time behind my computer editing videos for you guys <laughs> or making videos like this one. And for other professional violinists, this is the same truth. So if you have an orchestra job, you are practicing orchestra scores all the time and you have rehearsals and concerts and there might be no time to practice just for yourself to hone your technique. And if you are teaching, then you're busy teaching and you sometimes also don't have the time to practice. So we all struggle with it. Beginners, intermediate players, players in amateur orchestras and professionals in whatever line of professional music making or teaching. The number one thing that helps me most is left hand pizzicato. The thing about scale practice, for example, is that the emphasis is on the strongest part of your hand. If you shift up, for example, then here in this scale, I haven't used my fourth finger. I have used my first and second finger a lot and I haven't even used my fourth finger. So if uh, what I did when I had more time to practice was two hours of scales, then after those two hours, you didn't do much of the training on the weaker part of the hand. And that is something you so need. And if you're playing exercises like Stradic, also you will notice that you're mainly training the stronger part of your hand and not really the weaker part of your hand in general to say. There is a time and place for scales and stradic, so don't use this as an excuse to throw them out of the window. But left hand pizzicato really helps a lot to strengthen your third and fourth finger. There's a really easy way to practice this that even beginners can do and it's so beneficial. Just pluck the open strings, all four, with all four fingers. And then you can practice left hand pizzicato with stop note. And you see that while doing this, I instantly self-correct my left arm posture. So my arm is more embracing the neck of the violin. It just makes my fingers stand in a very arched and correct way, which is great to secure your intonation and to be able to play fast runs. You can also play arpeggios and scales with left hand pizzicato. As I told you, don't throw your scale book out of the window just yet because scales are really important for your intonation. Now in the left hand pizzicato, I wasn't working with the bow. And if I have very little time to practice, I also want to train the smooth movements in my bow and maintain that in good condition. So I make sure I always do something with whole bow. And in terms of scales, what helps me a lot is to play drone scales. With a drone you play yourself. 
And yes, you can use a tuner to play your scales in tune, but that's very reactive and passive in a certain way because you don't really hear something. You just adjust until the tuner says it's green and in tune. So a drone means that you just play a scale, but you play it together with an open string, which can be a lower string than you're playing the scale on on a higher string. And these drone scales are so helpful to correct your intonation in an active way. And at the same time, you need to bow on two strings at the same time. And I do this with whole bow. So you're training your bow at the same time. And then you might think, yeah, I can find a drone online. But for example, if I play a drone scale, let's do something simple, first position G major. So I first have something on the G string and then I play the open D string, which forces me to nicely curve and arch my fingers over that D string. And if I don't do that correctly, I instantly hear it. So this really forces me to embrace the violin and to have a really good, strong and reliable left hand posture. Now you can do drone scales on any level. You can do a simple first position one octave one. And here I leave my fourth finger on the G string just to train it because we practice with very little time and we want to make use of that time as best as possible. Obviously, you can also play two or three octave drone scales. What a lot of people do wrong when practicing is that they're practicing pieces that are way too difficult for them. While you should practice exercises and scales that are too difficult for you, so you can play pieces that are too easy for you. And then you can really focus on making the piece sound beautiful. So really challenge yourself with exercises. Now what I do, and I won't let you hear everything because I am practicing exercises that are too difficult for me and you don't want to hear it just as you don't want to see how sausage is made. But just to give an idea, for example, you can also play a two octave drone scale on the G string. Great for finger strength. Let me give it a try. This way you can also practice chromatic scales or arpeggios. Now another great element for a super quick practice session are stretches. Because what I see a lot with students is that their musical ear is fine. They can hear that they're out of tune. Usually they're even annoyed by playing out of tune. So it's not a matter of hearing. But sometimes it's a matter that your fingers just can't stretch enough. That's why it's very important to also practice stretches. Now, maybe for you, it's already a stretch to go, for example, from a fourth finger E on the A string to a low second finger, so a C. Then this can already feel like a stretch for you and can be an exercise in and of itself. But you can also practice more advanced stretches with double stops. And remember that in the first position, the notes are further apart than in the higher positions. So the biggest challenge for stretches is in the first position on the lower strings, because on the lower strings, your arm has to be around the violin more. Now, just to give you an example of a stretching exercise I do. And here 
my thumb can do whatever it wants to make the life of the other fingers easier but I do mind all the time that I have a nicely arched pinky. Now I will go into pinky strength in another video and also that you don't always have to place your pinky arched. But it's great for your finger strength and the reliability of your intonation to deliberately train this. And now remember that doing these drum scales and these stretches in double stops, I am training my bowing all the time, making best use of the little practice time that I sometimes have. Now the fourth element is to do something with thirds. It's just difficult to play thirds on the violin and it's so useful to practice them. I like to use Don't Etude number 8 for this, but you can also maybe play scales in thirds if you have a scale book that has them like Flash or Sefcheck. So you can use whatever you want, but it's so great for your intonation and it's also great for your left hand technique in general because playing in thirds really requires these nice arched fingers that go over the strings because again in double stops you have to go over the strings with your fingers and it's so good for your finger strength and independence. And I don't just play through don't eight. What I mostly do is just stick around and play the thirds back and forth. And sometimes I just have time for a few bars, but it's already helpful. Now generally, just as you perhaps, I have very little time to really practice for myself to hone my technique because I'm either busy with other things, the business or my children. And a lot of times I have to practice a ton of repertoire. So I'm not doing concerts that much, but I am teaching my students. So if they want feedback on a certain piece, I have to study that piece. And also I'm publishing almost daily videos here on YouTube and Instagram of different songs and I have to practice them too. So I need to get a lot of repertoire ready in very little time. And doing these exercises really helps me. So after all this, I can practice my repertoire maybe, or uh, I can go to something else. And what I notice is that practicing in this way really gets me progress in even half an hour a day. While there have been times during my conservatory training that I was practicing five hours a day and was not getting any progress. There was even a summer that my level actually went down. It went worse despite that I was practicing five hours a day. So in practicing, always remember, even if life gets in the way, it's about the quality of your practice. Then it's about the consistency of your practice so that you're doing it every day or almost every day. And lastly, it's about the quantity of your practice. So when I was in conservatory, I practiced two hours of scales a day, then etudes and exercises for one or two hours, and then the repertoire for one or two hours, and then you had rehearsals or lessons or whatever. I notice that I achieve now more in half an hour with these exercises than in hours and hours uh, when I was in the conservatory. And I always had the feeling that if a day was busy and I practiced only two hours, that I'd done nothing, that I just was maintaining my level a bit or something. And now with half an hour a day, I can get actual progress. So I'm quite new to these exercises because I have been learning them with my teacher Vivian Hoffman. And she is a student of the legendary Ruggiero Ricci, who spent his life figuring out Paganini's secret. And Vivian is making an amazing course about this that takes you all the way from a simple G major skill through exercises like this adjusted to your level all the way to playing Caprice 24. Paganini's Caprice 24 and everything in between. So this is a shortcut to going to a professional left hand technique. And if I knew this earlier, I could have saved myself thousands of hours. And the students that were in our pilot group also said that if I just knew this earlier, that I could have saved myself so much time. So if you feel held back 
in taking lessons because you think then I need to practice more and do more and more, more, more on top of the more, more, more I already have in my life, then this course really is a time saver that will get you faster progress in less time. Now, enrollment is open right now. Just go to violinlounge.com slash Paganini. It's open for all levels because we have exercises like this on all levels. And you might have this book by Ruggiero Ricci, but this book is made to be studied with a teacher. So it's not a curriculum. It's just a summary of exercises. And if you don't have the right guidance, this book can even be dangerous because if you don't perform all these crazy exercises in the right way and uh, at the right time and with the right preparation, then you really can injure yourself. So be careful with this. And uh, if you want the guidance of my teacher, Vivian Hoffman, going through similar exercises like this and the method she has developed to translate this to guide violinists of a beginner or an intermediate level, then check out violinlounge.com slash Paganini. I really hope to see you there just because, you know, I, I want to share this. I want people to know that there is a faster way. Now, thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.